It all started here, half a century ago, in orphanages like this in Hong Kong. In the 60s, more than a hundred children, mostly abandoned and mainly girls, were brought over from the orphanages in the former British colony to be adopted by families in the UK. The majority of the children were believed to be given up because of their parents' desperate situation as refugees from mainland China. These children, now middle-aged women, have lived their lives thousands of miles away from their roots in Southeast Asia. Today, 50 years later, we look at what some of them have been through over the years. Fifty-three-year-old Debbie Cook lives in Carlisle with her husband. She was adopted aged two in 1961 by a half-Chinese family in Cheshire. Although she feels lucky to have had her life in the UK with the benefits of a developed country, she still remembers the exclusion, the racism and the strangers who stared at her. I was the only Chinese uh, or slightest coloured person in our school. Uh, and yes, I was subjected to uh, extreme uh, racism remarks from children. And children are very, very cruel people. They don't really know the barriers. They don't know the etiquette. Um, they just come out and chant. My name was uh, Long. So you could imagine all the the horrible words that would be chanted out, especially from the boys, uh, and sometimes the girls would join in. Um, I always felt excluded. Uh, I wasn't really anybody to mix with. Sadly, Debbie Cook was not the only girl who experienced racist bullying in childhood. According to a three-year study by the British Association of Adoption and Fostering, they reviewed 72 of the women adopted from Hong Kong in the 1960s. The majority of women said they had experienced prejudice um, and it took lots of different forms. So there were some women um, who described kind of childhood bullying, um, so being called names in the playground or by children outside school um, and even occasionally by adults um, during their childhood. Um, most women, for most women, this wasn't a regular occurrence, um, but there were exceptions and women who'd really had quite sustained um, experiences of, of bullying or things like that. For Debbie, racial discrimination was only part of the story. She also felt confused about her identity, and throughout her years growing up in England, she always wanted to be white. Every time I looked in the mirror, I saw Chinese. On the inside, I felt English. There were many times that I wanted to be white so that I could blend in. And these kind of feelings, I think, were only thought about, but I never interpreted them at the time. And also, um, people would always remind me that I was Chinese, irrespective of how white I wanted to be. I never seemed to fit in with the English community or groups and in my early years I wasn't around enough Chinese to f find out whether I fitted in there and it was only as I grew older that I found that um, I didn't seem to fit in with them either because the the biggest problem was I didn't speak their language. Cantonese, Chinese cooking and food. Debbie is unfamiliar with them all but curious about them. However, although her adoptive father is a Chinese immigrant from Hong Kong, she was not taught anything particularly Chinese. But having a Chinese father didn't seem to help with the sense of belonging to her adoptive family. In a way, I felt like an outsider. I was envious. Um, sometimes people uh, didn't realize I was part of that group. And then if my mother said, uh, oh, no, 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 uh, there's, there's three of us, that, uh, you know, my three sisters and my mother, um, you used to get this sort of slightly puzzled look 
my sister would say, well, hey, you know, how can, how can that be? So then my mother would say, well, this is my eldest adopted daughter. And these are my two other daughters. So although it wasn't said with any malice, it still made me stand out. I didn't need to stand out because I already stood out. But these sort of little remarks, you know, you t you that they stay inside you whether you like it or not. Unlike Debbie Cook, Yvonne G from Hertfordshire seemed to feel more comfortable with her appearings and were immune to discrimination. But that doesn't mean she has no issues of her own. She was adopted at the age of six in December 1964. Her adoptive mother, who had psychological issues, did not treat her well. Yvonne was often forced to do things, but was negated for everything she did. Since the winter when she was brought over to the UK, she was emotionally tortured almost every day. A lot of the issues I had were to do with my mum and around the same time 10 years ago I stopped speaking to my mum, stopped contact because I just needed to in order to survive um, because my experience of her was very overpowering, overbearing and suffocating. She's very domineering, dominating, manipulative, very controlling. Um, she picked on me a lot, um, more so than my brothers, probably because I was another female. Although Yvonne cut any contact with her mother, things did not just stop there. It's relieved a lot of pressure in my relationship with my husband because she was interfering a lot. I was spending a lot of time um, driving my husband mad, focusing on my sadness, frustration, upset, irritation, all those things I felt with my mother that I couldn't really process because um, she's very dominating. To this day, Yvonne can still recall the fear and anxiety she felt every time she was in touch with anything that involved her mother. I was to literally, my heart would go boom, 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 boom when I saw a letter on the doorstep with her handwriting on it. Until a good friend of mine said, just because she sent you a letter doesn't mean to say you have to read it. And I think that's really encapsulates the, our relationship. Just because she said something, I always felt I had to do it. And it took me a very long time to realise I don't have to, just because she says jump, I don't have to say how high. The dysfunctional mother-daughter relationship, confusion about identities, racial abuse experienced in childhood. These may be the dark side of the adoptees from Hong Kong. Jasmine Gilly, who now lives in North London with her daughter, is one of the successes. She came over to the UK in 1963 when she was four years old and was adopted into a mixed family within a white society. Her father was African and her mother English and they already had three children while fostering colored children in Essex countryside. I don't feel I was discriminated or picked on. I don't feel um, that um, I had problems or um, issues. And there was never a time where I felt, oh dear, where am I? I think um, us children were, were very comfortable in our bodies, in our, in our identity. The fact that Jasmine was adopted and has been very happy made her consider adopting a Chinese baby since she was in her teens. Thirteen years ago, she adopted a daughter, Isabella. The baby girl was given up by a young mother from Hong Kong who turned to social services for help during pregnancy because she was not prepared to be a single mother. Although no one can tell that Isabella was adopted, Jasmine chose to tell her the truth early on. I think it's better to be honest now and better to let them know when they're young because it becomes very um, familiar and, and they just take it as part of everyday life if you explain to them earlier. And also I think it's, it makes her feel understood in where she stands. I think it's important when you, to explain to them um, the reasons um, and, and be positive about it. You know, I, I'd say that you're adopted and that your mother chose to give you away because she wanted you to have a better life and that she couldn't uh, um, provide that for you. She's very accepting. As an adoptee and an adoptive mother, Jasmine is not only open about her daughter. 
she feels it is okay for her daughter to trace her roots. This seems to be influenced by Jasmine's adoptive mother, a journalist who fostered quite a few children. When I was growing up, she would say to me, "If you want to,、um, if you want to trace your."、Um, Your family, or or go back to Hong Kong, then I'm I'm very happy to help you, and I'm very happy to encourage you, and so that also makes you feel very good about it because there's no hidden agenda, there's no being sneaky or secretive, and so therefore,、um, again, it makes me feel okay. If my daughter wants to find her biological mother, then that that's fine,、um, and and it's very easy for her to do so if she wanted to. If she wants to go down the route, then yes, I, I must let her, and I have to, I have to go willingly. It's it's something that we all, as an adopted parent, have to come to terms with. That you know, it might well happen. For Jasmine's daughter and most of the adoptions within the UK today, it might be very easy to trace the birth family. But for the women adopted from Hong Kong half a century ago, chances of finding the birth family are slim. The majority of the children, or the women in our study, were actually abandoned, so it meant that they could find no information about their parents at all. Nothing. There'll be records about where they were found, or and where they were taken to, which orphanage, but nothing about the birth parents at all. So it meant that if they wanted to search, there's no opportunity. Although there is almost no chance at all for them to find their birth families, these women, adopted as babies, meet up from time to time. Debbie Cook is the organizer of the UK Hong Kong Adopting Network. We like to call ourselves another family of sisters, and、uh, it's it's just taken over my life. Because I belong, it's a group that I feel part of. We've all felt so at peace with each other's company.、Uh, the reunions themselves are a safe area. All these feelings and incidences that I've harboured over the years are ones that other adoptees have experienced too. That I'm not alone anymore. The reunions with like-minded people who had similar beginnings have been very healing for some of the adoptees. As with Debbie, she found something she would very much like to be involved, which has changed her life, as her mother agrees. The times when I've felt most warm towards Deborah have really been since、um, the the contact with the adoptees. There was、um, a session when I was away with her for a couple of nights, when、um, I felt she was quite resentful about a lot of things that were happening.、Um, that she sort of felt, why is it always me that these things? So we discussed this, and、um, this was. How eventually she became involved with the the website and、um, the adoptees. So、uh, that very much changed her attitude. Some women thought they were the only person adopted transracially from Hong Kong half a century ago, while others knew there was a group as their parents formed a network and exchanged round robin letters. Very few were in regular contact. But this has changed with the development of the UK Hong Kong Adoptee Network. Although most women in this new family admitted feeling alienated from their community of origin, of being exposed to racism, were struggling to fit in with their adoptive family, they had overcome all the negatives of being internationally adopted by the time they reached the middle age. For these women. Born into tough circumstances, life seems to have offered them a growing sense of ease and genuine happiness as they have matured. <laughs>